This lesson is for section 8.6 on composite functions. Our objective for today, we're going to be given a real world situation that involves more than one variable and we'll find general and particular equations relating the variables to one another. We'll then use them as mathematical models to answer some additional questions. Our first example, why mammals are the way they are, is from our textbook. This is number 11 on page 450. Now please go ahead and pause the video so that you can read this first portion of the problem and we'll pick up with part A. All right, in part A, we're asked to write general equations for each of the four functions that are listed above. So let's start with this first line here. It says the mass of an animal is directly proportional to the cube of its length. Now I want to, off to the side, just define some of the variables here. I'm gonna let M equal the mass of the animal. I'll let L equal the length, and now I can write the equation for line one. So I have, if the mass of the animal is directly proportional to the cube of its length, I have M is equal to K, times L cubed. Now because we have multiple functions here, let's make sure we label this as K sub 1 so we know that this is one of our constants here. Um, we're going to have multiple constants within these problems here. So let's now work on line 2. It says the area of its skin is directly proportional to the square of its length. So we're introducing a new variable, so let's make sure we label that and define it. So let's let A equal the area of the skin. Okay, and since the area is directly proportional to the square of its length, we have an equation of the form A is equal to some constant, and this time we'll call it K sub 2, because it's a different constant than what we used in line 1. So K sub 2 multiplied by the square of the length, so L squared. In line 3 it says the rate at which it loses heat to its surroundings is directly proportional to its skin area. So again, we are introducing another new variable in this function. So the rate at which it loses heat, let's call that H, so let's call this heat loss, which is the rate, so rate of heat loss, okay? Now this is directly proportional to skin area, so I have the equation H is equal to K sub 3 multiplied by its skin area, so we've already defined that as A, so K sub 3 times A. And finally, for line 4, it says the amount of food it must eat per day is directly proportional to the rate of heat loss. So let's let F equal this new variable here, the amount of food that the animal must eat per day. So we have the amount of food our animal has to eat per day. And this is directly proportional to the rate of heat loss. So we have F is equal to another new constant, let's call that K sub 4, multiplied by the rate of heat loss, which we defined as H. So these are our general equations for each of the four functions that are listed above. Okay, now here in part B, we're asked to use substitution so that we can derive a new general equation that expresses the amount of food our animal must eat per day in terms of the animal's mass. So let's make sure we understand what this is asking us to do. Right now, we have mass in terms of length and the food in terms of the heat loss. So right now mass and food are not connected. What we're asked to do though is create a new function that expresses the amount of food in terms of the animal's mass. So y in terms of x. Okay, so just remember that terminology here. We have our dependent variable, the amount of food per day, and our independent variable which is going to be the mass. So in order to connect these two equations to one another, we're going to use um, some substitution. We're going to make multiple substitutions, but really what we're doing is composing two functions. Remember when we learned in first semester what f of g of x meant, we inputted a function g of x into the function f, and that's what we're going to be doing today as well. We are going to take a function, each one of these is an individual function, and we will input it into another. Okay, so we're going to begin here with actually the last equation that we came up with. We have that the amount of food the animal must eat per day is directly proportional to the rate at which it loses heat. Okay, now the goal of these problems, these word problems, is going to be to use substitution multiple times. So my goal is to eventually go from food consumption and relate it to the, the mass of the animal. Now in between I have all of these other equations that relate um, you know, variables to one another. So what I'm going to do is start with just kind of working my way back up here because I notice that H, this H here, is in terms of the skin area. Okay, and right now I can eliminate that variable h if I make a substitution. I'm going to let h equal k sub 3 times a. So back down here I have f is equal to k sub 4, and I'll replace this h now with that purple function k sub 3 times a. Now I have the food consumption is directly proportional because these are just two other k values to multiply together, so it's another constant here. So it's directly proportional now to its skin area. Now, because I've written it like this, I can make another substitution. I know that the skin area, 
if you come back up here, is directly proportional to the square of the length of the animal. Okay, so once again, let me switch back to orange here. We have the daily food consumption of that animal is going to be directly proportional to, let's go to purple, and then we'll replace that A with k sub 2 l squared because a is equal to k sub 2 l squared the skin area is directly proportional to the square of its length so now i have food consumption expressed in terms of the the length of the animal okay now we're really very close to being able to express the amount of food per day that the animal eats in terms of the animal's mass so we're really close to being able to express that we have that le the length here, which is connecting the two together right now, but it's not going to be as, just as easy as making a substitution here because really this is in terms of the length squared, and here we have a mass in terms of length cubed. So off to the side, what we must do is solve for the length in terms of the mass. Okay, so let's do that off to the side here. So if we, if we write um, the mass is directly proportional to the the Q of its length, and we solve for L, we have M over K sub 1 is equal to L cubed. Now, if we want to get L completely by itself, we could take the cube root of both sides or raise it to the 1 3rd power. It's the same thing. I'm going to raise it to the 1 3rd power, so I have M over K sub 1 raised to the 1 3rd is equal to L. Okay, so now that we have length here in terms of mass, I'm going to make another substitution in this equation. I'll replace this portion of the equation here for length. Okay, so let's go back up here and let's switch colors again. So we have f is equal to k sub 4 times k sub 3 times k sub 2. Now instead of writing the length squared, I'm going to replace that with m over k sub 1. Raise that to the 1 3rd power. Now don't forget though, you have to raise all of this to the second power because we are squaring the length. So raise that to the second power. And now we'll just go ahead and simplify this. Okay, so let's keep this all one color to simplify. I have the food consumption here, F is equal to K sub 4 times K sub 3 times K sub 2. And then if I multiply these two exponents here, I have M over K sub 1 raised to the 2 thirds. And now I'll have to raise both M and K sub 1 to the 2 thirds. So let me erase here and just write that as M to the 2 thirds over K sub 1 to the 2 thirds. Okay, so our goal has been met. We are, have now found um, the amount of food that the animal must eat per day in terms of its mass. But the only thing I don't like about this is that we have all of these messy k values here. Now, k is not a variable. k is a constant. Each one of these represents a constant. And when you multiply a constant by a constant, you just get a new constant. So what we're going to do here is simplify this formula just a little bit. We're going to take that equation here and replace all of those k values with k sub 5. So I have the food consumption is directly proportional to the mass raised to the 2 thirds power. Okay, now some students have a really hard time with this. How can you just get rid of all of those k's? Remember, they're not variables, and a constant times a constant just equals another constant. So off to the side, I'm going to show what k sub 5 is replacing. So k sub 5 is substituting in for k sub 4 times k sub 3 times k sub 2 all over k sub 1 raised to the 2 thirds. So this is what that constant, you can, this is how you can find that constant k sub 5. It's just equal to this expression here of all of those constants. Okay, now the last portion of this um, question asks you to tell how the food consumption varies with mass. So based off of our new equation here, f is equal to k sub 5 times m to the 2 thirds, food consumption is directly proportional. Okay, it's directly proportional to the 2 thirds power of the mass, I'm running out of room here, of the mass of the animal. Okay, so that's how we're going to use substitution in order to work our way backwards so that we can find um, a function that relates the variables that we want. All right, so we're going to get some more practice with this, but first we're going to use that model to answer some additional questions. 
Okay, now in part C, we're taking our general equation that we found in part B here, and we're trying to find the particular equation by solving for the proportionality constant. In other words, we want that k sub 5 here. So they're going to give us some information, and they do. They say that the smallest animal, the shrew, eats three times its mass each day, and a shrew has a mass of about 2 grams, which is about that of a penny, so it's teeny tiny. Now we want to find the proportionality constant by plugging in this information. So let's make sure we, we get it right. So we have a, a mass of 2 grams. And if it eats 3 times its mass each day, then its food consumption is 6 grams. Now to find that proportionality constant, we'll just plug in those values into our general equation here. We have f is equal to k sub 5 times m to the 2 thirds power. So we have 6 is equal to k sub 5 times 2 raised to the 2 thirds power. So if we want to solve for k sub 5, we'll have to isolate that by dividing that 2 to the 2 thirds power and make sure that you plug that into your calculator correctly. So the hard part when you put it in your calculator is making sure that you have adequate parentheses because when you try to put in 2 raised to the 2 thirds, you got to be careful that you put this in parentheses, but you're also dividing by that whole expression, so you want to put that in parentheses as well. So that's really what you should write um, as you type that in your calculator. And if you want to check, I would suggest you should check this to make sure you have the skills to type that in your calculator correctly. You should get a k value that's approximately 3.78. So make sure you do store this value. Okay, so we'll stow it. All right, I'd like you guys to try part D on your own. I don't think it should take you very long, but it is good practice so that you make sure that you know how to put this into your calculator correctly and also that you know how to interpret the units on um, your answer. So please try that problem and go ahead and check with the key and we'll move on now to the weather balloon problem. All right, in example two, it says helium filled balloons are sent up into the atmosphere carrying instruments that measure weather conditions. As the balloon ascends, assume that its volume varies directly with the absolute temperature and inversely with the pressure of the atmosphere. So let's write off to the side some of these variables. We have V equaling the volume. Let's do T as the absolute temperature. And we'll use pressure for P. So P is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. Now, um, the second sentence says the volume of the balloon is also directly proportional to the cube of its radius. So since we're introducing a new variable here, let's use R as radius. So that's the radius of the balloon. And then the last sentence here says the surface area is directly proportional to the square of its radius. So we're introducing one more new variable and that's the surface area, so let's use A for surface area of the balloon. All right, now let's write the general equations for each of those functions above. So in our first line, it says the volume varies directly, so we know that V is equal to K sub 1 times the absolute temperature Okay, it varies directly with the absolute temperature, but inversely with the pressure of the atmosphere. So we'll divide that by P. Okay, so we have volume is equal to K sub 1 times T over P. So let's rewrite that a little bit nicer so it fits on this line. All right, now um, the second line says the volume of the balloon is also directly proportional to the cube of its radius. So this one's a little bit more straightforward. We have volume is equal to K sub 2, so it's, it's a different constant. Um, and it's directly proportional to the cube of the radius, so r cubed. Then finally, its surface area, so a, is directly proportional to the square of its radius. So k sub 3 is equal to r squared. Now in part b, we want to use substitutions, okay, so that we can derive an equation for the surface area in terms of volume. So we want to see a new equation that relates our variable for surface area and our variable for volume. All right, so once again, we're going to start with that last equation that we have written. We have the surface area is directly proportional to the square of its radius. Now, our goal is to replace this variable here with some expression that relates the volume. Now, volume here is related to the radius um, cubed. So we can't just make a direct substitution here because this is in terms of radius squared. So what we're going to need to do back here is solve for r. Okay, so we'll solve for r so that we get an equation that relates the radius in terms of the volume. So we've got v is equal to k sub 2 times r cubed. Now to isolate r, let's divide out that k sub 2. And then we will raise this to the 1 3rd power on both sides. So we have v over k sub 2 raised to the 1 3rd power 
is equal to r. Now you could also cube root both sides, but I'm just gonna choose to write it with this power here because um, I need to plug that in over here. Now when I plug that in, a lot of students will forget one portion here. Remember when you plug in v over k squared raised to the one third, this whole thing has to be squared. And I just like showing it in terms of the exponents here because it's easier to simplify that, I think, than seeing something like this and you have to square that, the cube root. So I just keep it in terms of a rational power instead of um, a radical. All right, now we have um, area is equal to k sub three times v to the two thirds over k sub two raised to the two thirds as well, okay? After you um, multiply these two exponents here and then raise both v and k sub two to that power. Now again, um, I'm gonna clean this equation up a little bit by getting rid of both k values here and just calling a new k value. Let's call that constant k sub four. So we introduce a new constant, but it's okay to do that because it's not a variable. So we have area is equal to k sub four times v raised to the two thirds power. So the surface area is directly proportional to the two thirds power of its volume. Now off to the side, I will show what k sub four is. Remember, we're replacing both of those two k values here. So k sub four is equal to k sub three divided by k sub two over two thirds, or I'm sorry, k sub two raised to the two thirds. Okay, so here is a new equation that relates our surface area in terms of the volume of the balloon. So that's really all you have to do is make sure that you, you use the appropriate equation so that you can make some substitutions and you just continue to make substitutions until you, you satisfy what the original question is asking. So let's move on now to part C and we'll get one more practice problem with this. All right, now in part C, it asks us to write an equation that expresses surface area in terms of temperature and pressure. Now I had to shrink everything down a little bit to fit these beginning equations in there. So we wanna tur turn our area equation that we just found, area is equal to k sub four times v raised to the two thirds power. And instead of seeing volume, I want to now see temperature and pressure. So we're going to go back to that original equation, that very first one that we, we came up with. We have volume is equal to um, a k value times the temperature over the pressure. So this is relating both variables together in one. So I'm just gonna make a direct substitution. I'm gonna replace this V here with K sub one times T over P. So again, I'm taking this whole equation here, that, that side of the equation and replacing the V with that. So let's blow this up a little bit. So we have A is equal to K sub four times K sub one times T over P raised to the two thirds power. Now I'm just gonna work a little bit on simplifying this. So I'll distribute, well, I'll raise each base here to that power. So I have A is equal to K sub four times K sub one raised to the two thirds power. And I should be putting parentheses around that because otherwise it kind of gets a little messy. Um, but then we have T raised to the two thirds and P raised to the two thirds. Um, now again, I'm just gonna simplify it one more step because I don't particularly like um, having multiple K values. So I'm gonna replace that with a K sub five. So I have K sub five multiplied by T to the two thirds over P to the two thirds. So the surface area of the balloon is gonna be directly proportional to the absolute temperature, to the two thirds power of the absolute temperature, and it's inversely proportional to the pressure raised to the two thirds power. All right, now off to the side, I just wanna make sure we define what k sub five is because we just replaced those constants with k sub five. So k sub five is equal to k sub four times k sub one raised to the two thirds power. And therefore, since k sub five here is equal to k sub four, I'm gonna replace that with the original k values that we had. So k sub three over k sub two raised to the two thirds, then all multiplied by k sub one raised to the two thirds. So this is a little bit of overkill, but you know, it's fun. We're just using substitution. So it's not too hard, but it is uh, probably not necessary. I do want you to write k sub five though. You don't have to replace it with the originals. All right, that's the end of the lesson. Um, make sure you come into class tomorrow, ready to work, that you're prepared to ask questions if something is still confusing to you. Uh, but nice job, I will see you guys tomorrow.